Hello, I'm Sarah Lister from Sheffield Digital, and today I'm talking to Hannah Wilkinson, who is Razor's delivery lead. Hannah, what does your job entail? Um, so, as a delivery lead, I'm there to uh, make our projects happen. So, I'm often the glue that holds all of the bits of the team together and, and keeps things moving forward. Um, so, I work with a, a great group of people. They're, they're really clever and I get to draw on all the different skill sets that they've got to be able to deliver what our client has asked us to, to produce for them. Um, I'm there to keep the team happy and motivated. Uh, and then I'm also a representative for the client within Razor as our, our company and I, I advocate for that client and make sure that we give them the best that we can and then also I'm there to represent Razor to the client so I have to kind of put on a good face of, of our business and our company to them. Um, I plan a project so I will take a project from the initial chats and working out what challenge it is we're trying to solve and how we're going to go about it and although I might not come up with a solution and, and actually be the, the brains behind the operation, I do get to kind of see it through from start to finish and facilitate all of the activities that need to happen to, to get a project in place. And it's lovely because it touches all areas of the business. So there's the people who produce these amazing pieces of tech and then there's our like clever marketing department and client services department and you know we they're there to make sure that we keep the client happy and that we can shout about what we do so I really kind of do have a lot of involvement with everyone everyone at the company which is great. How do you adapt your approach when you're working with different people so you mentioned teams and clients for example? Yeah so with some clients are informal and some are formal. There's there's different um, ways of working at the different companies that we that we work for. Um, and each of them needs like a slightly different approach. So it might be a different use of language or the levels of preparation that you need or the types of meetings that you need to book in. And I think actually just being really aware of how they operate as a company allows you to make a good judgment on what your approach should be with those people. Um, but regardless of how they work, communication's the vital thing. And um, really, if everyone knows what to expect and what's coming, then there's not really any kind of misunderstandings along the way. So that's kind of the key ingredient as opposed to getting the approach perfect the first time round. Um, but, you know, I've got all of my different team members as well, which take different types of approach so you might have someone who needs a bit of support and and bringing on through things and they're trying to kind of grow as a professional and then you've got other people who might be absolutely smashing the job and really you just need to kind of like keep the ground clear so that they can keep going you know so you've got you've got different jobs to do depending on who you're dealing with within your team um, but a while back we did a bit of training on personality types is fairly standard kind of management style training where you learn about different introverts and extroverts and all that type of thing but uh, and it was with a great guy called Bobby Singh who ran it but he gave us like a really good set of tools and how you can tailor your approach to somebody to make sure that they are the most comfortable they can be and ultimately you'll get the best results out of them so you know whether someone likes having information ahead of a call or someone who's quite happy to just do things on the fly um so you know you get to learn and understand kind of how how best to, to work with people but i think essentially i'm quite an open book and believe that honesty is the best policy I, I think that shows respect to the people you're working with and it shows respect for the projects that you're working on um, and then like information is power you know like you need to make everything as transparent as possible so that people can make the best decisions they can with the best information um, so that's that's kind of how I go about my approach to projects and people <laughs> and have you been doing that online since you started working at Razor or um have you had any opportunities to actually be with people in person so far? So I haven't managed to meet any clients in person, which is very frustrating um, because it's quite difficult to build a rapport over a video call when you've never met somebody. Um, and actually the majority of my teammates I've never met in person. So I was employed during the first lockdown that we had. Um, so I did manage to get into the office a little bit over the summer. Uh, so I have kind of met some of the people face to face and kind of been able to work with them. But yeah, majority of people is just over video calls, which has been a challenging situation to be in, but actually quite nice as well, because you get 
you still get that like focus time where you can get your work done but everyone's only a quick video call away you know um and we use slack as our like communication tool as well so you can chat to somebody anytime you like and kind of just call them up so you know this modern day technology makes it very easy to stay connected <laughs> that's very true why does this type of work appeal to you so I'm an organiser, um, and like those who can't do it, organise it, right? That's, <laughs> that's how it goes. Um, but I love mapping things out and planning, and I do it in every aspect of my life. So there's no holiday that isn't planned within an inch of its life. Um, but I work with an amazing team, and I learn something new every day. So it doesn't matter if that's how to talk to people or like what our approach is or a new piece of technology that's coming out and like learning about it and basically blowing my mind or you know just like how to make things run smoothly I, I'm definitely learning something new every day and um, that feels challenging it, it always feels like a challenge and I'm kind of I'm into that like motion of learning so whilst ever I'm learning I'm happy in my in my job so yeah I think that holds a great appeal for me. Yeah, it sounds like it's really good um, motivation, like really good for motivation. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. There's there's definitely no feeling of stagnation or being static. You know, you you are always kind of being slightly pushed and and um, kind of growing with that. So yeah, it's it's lovely. That's great to hear. And what do you think are the core skills that you need as a delivery lead? I know you mentioned communication is a really key one. Yeah, um, I think people skills would be kind of at the top of the list, really. So Razor itself, a, a company that's a big believer in there's humans that work there. You know, we're not a cog in the machine. Everyone is a human and an, indi and an individual. Um, and it's really at the core of everything that we do. Um, so it's so important to be able to build relationships, whether that's with a developer you're working with, a tester that you're working with, the marketing team who are going to need information or your clients. Like there's always a rapport to be being built and built. Um, and I think you have to kind of recognize the needs of different people as well as you're going. So, and, and where they are at that moment in time. So do they need support? Do they need focus time? And like, so like you've got to protect them from everybody else that they can just get on with what they need to do. Um, you know, do they need some information? And it's being able to intuitively recognize friction points and then act on that and be able to remove them so that everybody else has an easier time of it. So I've described myself as the glue. I guess I'm also the oil in the cogs. <laughs> but I suppose in terms of like other skills, for me, organization is, is quite key. Um, but I think that comes down to personality type, really. So there's some delivery leads at Razor who um, probably wouldn't have organization skills at the top of their thing, but they are excellent delivery leads nonetheless. And it scares me the way they work, but that's because <laughs> I, I would like to be prepped. <laughs> um, but being able to retain information is really important as well. So if you can paint a picture of a project from start to finish and decide where you are and see what's got to come next, um, then that's really, really valuable. Um, and then I think being able to reflect and learn and, and grow as a person. So we do a lot of retrospectives at different points in projects where we look back at how things have gone. And um, we always do it with the belief that everyone did the best job they could at the time with the tools that they had at the time. So what can we do to improve the tools that they had and, and make that better and make those processes work more in their favor so that for future projects, we're not making the same mistakes or you know, we're, we're removing those kind of, um, again, friction points and making sure that there's constant improvement there. And that happens to you on a personal level as well, because as a delivery lead, there's always something you could have been doing better or in better time or, you know, and that self-reflection is very important, but also quite hard to do sometimes. That sounds like a really positive approach to work. Yeah. Together. Yeah, I think um, it's like that throughout Razor, really, constantly trying to innovate and improve and, um, you know, just get better at what we do. And I think, the changes that we've made in the in the business from when I started to now are, have made massive inroads and you know they were already working really well so now we're just like getting smoother and smoother and better at what we do it's it's nice to be part of. 
where did you learn these skills and gain exper experience that you brought into this position at Razor? Well, I mean, I kind of already alluded to my natural skill set as being quite organized. It's like my default way of being, but a lot of it has been learned on the job. So I don't have a background in technology. Um, I started life in a commercial role for an online travel agency. So I was looking at um, contracts with hotels and big suppliers and things like that. And um, I, I kind of, as I worked there and grew um, in my role, I took on more departments that just kind of needed that help in getting organized and um, kind of like formalizing what it was they did and eventually I ended up in our IT department where I was a bit of a hybrid project manager, BA, delivery lead, it was all kinds of things. I was basically just an unorganized person in IT <laughs> um, and that was kind of my first dabble at uh, looking at the business needs and prioritization of what um, the developers were working on and writing requirements, making sure they had what they needed. So, so although I didn't have that background in technology, I did have a lot of company knowledge and coupled with being organized meant that I could be really effective in that team and help them. Um, but then I moved on to work for an outdoors company and I was an e-commerce project manager. Uh, and I learned a great deal from my mentor, Philippa Cheshire. So she was my boss at the time and I'm still in touch with her now and we have quite like regular catch up sessions. Um, but she's massively inspirational and she's always working hard to grow as a person and as a professional and kind of takes everyone else along with her for the journey. Um, so I feel like I, I really honed my skills on that team. Um, but yeah, what I did there was like miles away from what we do at Razor, but because it utilized a very similar skill set, it's meant that I've been able to kind of hit the ground running at Razor and really take on those projects. So I've never really worked in a, an agency setting before. I've always been on, like, I've always known everything about the product that I'm developing, whereas now I know nothing about the companies and the way they work. And that it doesn't always mean that I have to, but you know, it's, it's definitely taken me out of my comfort zone. So I'm still learning uh, <laughs> as I go now. <laughs> and what was the application and interview process like with, Ray, with this job at Razor? So it was quite in depth actually. So I had um, an initial chat, so uh, an initial kind of interview with um, Ellie, who's our, she head of client services, something uh, like that. And um, she kind of just asked me questions about my background and it was quite informal and very friendly. And then from that point, they decided that they wanted to find out a bit more. So I had an interview where I had to do a, um, like a bit of a presentation on uh, a, a certain topic kind of around being a delivery lead. I had to talk about my uh, backgrounds and, and my career to date and how that was kind of applicable and answer general interview questions that came with that. And then I also had to do a bit of a lightning talk as well uh, to a different set of people. And I think what it did was allowed like a few people at Razor to get a feel for what it was I was offering as a person and what I could perhaps bring to the team and how they would be affected. So I had, you know, developers and the delivery leads and the head of the company and stuff were all in on this kind of quite long interview. Um, so it, it did take a bit of prep and a bit of, um, you know, like really trying to think things through and, and make sure that you're putting across your best self. But actually it was quite insightful because they care about who they're hiring, you know, and they want to make sure that that person is going to work as part of the wider team. And, um, you know, nobody just gets a job on their merits. You kind of have to prove that you belong there, but that's, it's a good thing. That's really interesting. And is there anything that you find challenging as part of your role? Yeah, um, so it's quite fast paced. Uh, there's lots of context switching because you are working with um, different clients and, you know, you might talk to every client that you work with in a day. So you're having to like change, change what you're talking about and remember what you're talking about with each one. Um, so for someone who values prep, um, that sometimes means I'm relying on my wits more than I would like to. Uh, <laughs> and that does make me a bit uncomfortable, but I recognize that as I can, an area that I can grow. Um, so it's a challenge I'm definitely up for. Uh, and then I've spoken about approach and sometimes you don't always get that right. And it's not always easy to reflect where you've got it right and what more you could have done, but it's like a really important part of the job. So 
I, I think although I find like being organized quite easy and that's that's like my forte it doesn't necessarily mean that I find the job easy and it is definitely a challenging role but a fun one at the same time and how does Razor support you and your career development? Um, the level of encouragement at Razor is something I've never really witnessed before <laughs> in another job. Um, they they are all for the people that work there. Um, so they do they do kind of structured activities around your personal development. So you have like regular one to one sessions um, where you can identify actions that are laid in your in your performance and how you can improve and grow um, but as a company they celebrate wins whether that's on a personal level or a professional level and they, there's like a lot of encouragement behind that and then if you face a challenge at Razor it feels like everyone's got your back so there's no concept of being on your own and stuck at all you know that you, you're definitely part of a team. At Razor they really want their people to succeed and grow um, and they're willing to provide training and consider what might be useful to people and they're open to you suggesting things that you want to learn as well um, and I don't necessarily have a linear career path mapped out for me uh, but the Razor ethos is that there's always opportunities opening up um, and it could be through promotion or a changing job role. Um, but you know, the, the opportunities are there for you to grab or, or you know, if, if you see an opportunity, you can suggest it, they're very open to that. So, you know, who knows what the future holds? I, I'm kind of happy to try and grab what I can with Razor because I know that whatever direction I, I kind of go in, I'll be supported along that journey. That's so good to hear. Um, and finally, what advice would you give as a starting point to someone who is thinking about a career change into a role like yours? Okay, I mean, I'm biased, so I would definitely say do it because it's a fun job. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's really varied and there's lots of lots of stuff to learn, but. I think because the skills are so transferable, it isn't always necessary to have direct experience in technology or in like a technology setting even. Um, I think if you've got the people skills, if you can be organized, if you've kind of led any kind of project, it really lends itself to this. And if you can be a helicopter thinker where you can see the whole, um, then that'll stand you in a really good stead. So it's, it's kind of making sure you've got got the right skill set and mix and that you can um, intelligibly prove that you can transfer those over and that you understand the role, you know, like understand what it is and it, it will be different for every company. So um, a delivery lead at Razor might be different for a delivery lead uh, in a company that doesn't work with lots of clients and actually is its own product, you know, you know so there's, there are differences there, but so many resources out there for uh, looking at what we as delivery leads do and the different methodologies that we employ um, and if if you can do that bit of self-learning to try and understand that and take that on and then can prove that those other skills do transfer and that you've got them then you know that's it's a really good starting point. Oh that's great thank you so much Hannah. No worries it's been a pleasure to talk to you.